this demonstration will look at email address policies. The purpose of an email address policy is to allow us to generate email addresses for our objects. We have a default policy and this default policy creates an email as we can see here of alias at, in our case, adatum.com. So what we'll do here is we'll modify the default policy to start with. So we'll click the edit button. On the general page, general information, it's got the lowest priority. Then we'll go for our email address format. And what we want to do at this point here is we want to generate another email address format. So we're going to do for a datum.com. We're going to actually go for first name dot last name. At, in our case, it's going to be a datum.com. But we could have first initial last name, first name, initial surname, surname dot first name, and so on down this list. Right, now we've done that, we could actually make this the reply email address as well. So let's do that. And then we'll save this off. And then what we'll do is we'll save off and we're going to apply that. If we click on the apply to, that would apply to everyone. Now we've done that, we'll just apply the policy. We'll say yes to apply the policy. And this is going to go through and generate those additional email addresses. What we can also do as well is we can create our own email address policies. So we don't have to modify the default. We could create our own. In order to actually create an email address policy, you have to have an accepted domain defined. So we have a datum.com, but what we also want to do is receive email for sales.adatum.com. So the first thing I have to do here is I have to create an accepted domain. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do sales domain. Then the accepted domain will be sales.adatum.com. We're going to make this an authoritative domain, so this is going to accept email for valid recipients in this exchange organization, and select Save. Once we've created this accepted domain, we can come back to our email address policies, and we can create now a new email address policy. So I'm going to call this one Sales Email. I'm going to click on the plus to create the address format. I'm going to create this one as a first initial surname at whatever the domain is, so our case yet again, datum.com. Now because this has a higher priority than the default email address policy, you'll notice that I can't untick the make this the reply email address. So we'll select save. Then what we'll do is we've got all recipient types. So what we're going to do at this point here is we're actually going to just add a rule. So we're going to stick with the all recipient types, but we're going to scroll this down and we're now going to add a rule. Then we're going to click on the little drop down. And what we want to do with this is we just want to go for recipient container. And then what we're going to do for the recipient container is we're going to apply that to sales and select OK. Then what we'll do is we'll save that off. Click OK. So go for our sales email. And then what we'll do is we'll apply that policy. Say yes at that point there. And that's now apply that policy. So we'll select close. What we'll do is we'll just come to recipients and we'll just verify that this has indeed worked. So in recipients, the first one we'll go for here is we'll go for Arlene. Arlene is a member of the sales department. So if we click edit and then if we just go for email address, what we can see here is yes, indeed, we have got three email addresses. So we've got the default policy and we've got the sales policy. So we'll cancel that off there. Next thing we'll do is we'll have a look at Adam Barr. So we'll highlight Adam, click the edit button. Then what we'll do is we'll have a look at the email address. And as we can see here, he's got the two from the default policy. The sales policy has not been applied. And that's the end of this demonstration. Thank you.